This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 531 of Horse Tip Daily. A different horse tip, a different equine topic, a different equestrian expert every day. Horse Tip Daily brings the world of equine knowledge to you one day at a time. Today's tip is brought to you by FeedXL.com, the simple-to-use, scientific, unbiased, do-it-yourself nutrition planner for your horse. Hi, Coach Jen here, and thanks for tuning in to Horse Tip Daily. Today's tip is from the Horse.com's weekly horse health report on the Horses in the Morning show, episode number 258. Today's tip is about bandaging, how-tos, and how-not-tos. But first, a word from today's sponsor, equestriancollections.com. Autumn is here. Time to cash in on Mother Nature's horse-friendly weather and take to the saddle with renewed enthusiasm. In so doing, you'll likely notice a few gaps in you and your horse's fall wardrobes. That turnout sheet that's seen its last roll in the pasture. The fleece vest that is well past vintage and moving swiftly towards ratty. EquestrianCollections.com has what you and your horse need, plus the latest just-can't-live-without fashions for fall. Visit EquestrianCollections.com today for fresh, fashionable, and functional items for your horse. Now, enjoy today's tip. We have, we have a fun show planned. Um, we want to talk a little bit about leg protection because it, it's something that we get, we get asked about a lot. And, you know, leg protection for, well, how do you, how do you wrap a, a leg for first aid? Should you use wraps or boots in the trailer? What about when you're riding? What are the best boots to use for support or for protection? And there's always a number of questions. So that's, those are the three primary reasons why we want to protect a horse's leg. And um, we've, we do have a video, of course, on how to wrap a horse's leg. So we've just put up, and we'll, I'll put that link up there on the Facebook page so people can can see some technique uh, recommendations, but um, Aaron, talk to us a little bit of wrapping, about wrapping a leg for wound care. The important part you have to remember most of all is uh, that the wrap is supposed to be a protection, but it also helps keep the swelling down. And I always tell people is the center of the wrap is where the wound is, because that's going to have the highest pressure to it. On the edges, the um, wrap isn't as tight or as snug as the center. So you want to try to make that uh, wound coverage, the center of your leg wrap you're going to do. And that would mean that those that wrap legs for a living, you know, they're grooms or um, barn help of some sort, and they wrap legs prior to the trainer going out to ride, they, they primarily wrap the cannon bone area with a polo wrap. And when you say wrap a leg and the wound's like on the lower end of that cannon, they'll do it with the normal cannon bone wrap as if they're going out to ride the horse, and that's not the point of it. The point is to cover that wound and make it the center of the wrap. So <clears throat> when, you're, when you're doing this uh, wound care, there are different layers to the wrap. It's not just simply slap on a gauze and put that wrap around it and cover it up, which I run into probably about 85 to 90 percent of the time, and I'm sure other veterinarians do too. Um, it's kind of like they're putting a Band-Aid on themselves. They just put a little gauze on there, put some vet wrap on, and that's what they've been doing for the last two weeks. And there's still a lot of swelling in the leg. Well, that can be a huge problem. You can tourniquet the leg. You can what they call it, the layman. You know, people would call it cord tendon, where they, the vet wrap can wrap up into a nice little cord and wear on the tendons and ligaments on the lower limb and cause some problems with that tendon or ligament because it's right underneath the skin. So, when you're doing a wound care wrap, you want to make sure you put some sort of gauze with your medication on that wound, and if you're instructed differently by your veterinarian, by all means, do what your veterinarian suggests. You place on top of that wound, you put a padding of some sort, like a cotton quilt or cotton roll on top of that to protect the leg itself, and then you add your vet wrap or what they call standing wraps that have the Velcro. Not the polos, they're too thick on fleece, but the standing wraps are nice and thin, and you add that on top for uh, a pressure uh, aspect of the bandage to, in order to um, decrease the swelling in the area. Very good, and that's an important point not to put vet wrap directly on the skin because that's, as you said, you run into that a lot, and we we get a lot of comments from that about our, with our from our veterinarians as well. Um, what about tightening the wrap? I, we we get questions about as well that do you tighten the wrap all the way around? Do you pull against the back, the front of the leg? 
Um, honestly, recommend? tightening across the front is the more common way to do it. There hasn't been any proof that you will pull a tendon out by tightening across the back. They're, that's an old wives' tale. So those that um, have come up from the inside and pulled up to the back, it's really uncomfortable way to wrap that leg. So pulling across the front of the leg as you're wrapping is um, realistically a better way of wrapping. So it, it's more technique, and you get a better, firmer coverage on the or firmness to the wrap uh, to reduce the swelling than you try if you're trying to pull from the inside out. So I'm not sure if I explained that very well. I can demonstrate it much better than I can describe it. But yes, pulling across the front gives you better torquing on um, making the wrap very tight. Now, granted, I don't think. Um, the strongest man of the world should be tightening your wrap because that would probably be too tight. <laughs> You'd probably just tell him to make it snug. So just look at your abilities. If you don't think you're making a tight wrap and you'll know that because it falls down like a sock, then you probably need to have somebody else in the barn help you out and make it a little tighter wrap. Maybe somebody who's got a little upper arm strength uh, more than you do. But don't consider it a gym exercise. Got it. <laughs> right, right. You're not lifting weights. So you just need to make it snug because you don't want it to fall down and you want it to do the added ability and that's decrease the swelling in the area. Sure. Now what if you've got a wound? We mentioned uh, wounds in the cannon area and further down in the fetlock area. What if you've got a wound in the, on the knee or the hock or above? Yeah, those are very, very difficult. And, and those are ones I, I guess I can't say. Those are the ones I almost always find a gauze and that wrap wrapped on top of it because they can't quite figure out how to wrap that area. Um, and it usually does not stay on the wound area. It has fallen down. So that's the biggest problem is it falls down. It, you can't use sticky Band-Aids to get it stick on there because the horse moves. They'll, they'll chew it off, that kind of thing. So what we have to do is something called a stacking bandage. And what that is is basically like you stack brick, blocks as a kid. You're going to have to put a bandage below, and that bandage is not there to protect the wound or anything, it's there to hold up the other bandage. And I usually incorporate it into one vet wrap roll if I can, or one leg wrap if I can, and then I'll overlap. If I couldn't quite do it because it was up in the highest part of the forearm, let's say, and you're making the leg walk as one big stump or stick, um, and that's okay, is I'll start my second roll of vet wrap or my second standing wrap a little bit below the knee and start incorporating the knee so that it becomes one movement from the shoulder forward or the elbow short forward on that leg, only because you know that wrap's going to stay in place. If you put one wrap on the bottom and then you put one wrap on the top over the wound, it still will probably slip. If you incorporate it as one, one solid bandage, it usually stays in place very nicely. And again, make it very, very snug. When you're wrapping your wraps around, your vet wraps and your standing wraps, you overlap by one half of the other one, and they're usually four-inch wide wraps. Those are preferred in horses, not the two-inch in dogs and cats, the four-inch. So you want to overlap by at least a, a half as you're going up, and you kind of make it a barber pole or candy stripe, whatever you want to call it, going up the limb or down the limb, depending on um, how you're instructed to do the wrap. Very good. Now, as far as wrapping the hock, there's a particular consideration with that as well, right? Yeah, it's like doing the ankle in the human. Exactly like doing the ankle in the human. It's a figure eight. You want to keep the point of the hock open in the back. That tends to be an area. Of course, they're going to flex the hock area, but that tends to be an area that will get rubbed sore a lot quicker. It almost happens in 24 or 48 hours. So you want to make sure that that area is opened up so they don't get hock sores over the back side of it. Now, granted, if the wound is on the back of the hock, please seek instruction from a veterinary technician or a veterinarian on how you're going to have to wrap that, and you'll probably have to incorporate that, that hock area into a bandage, but you're probably going to put some padding around it. Right. And one other thing about wrap, wrapping a hock, especially, I think a lot of horses aren't used to having that area wrapped, and you want to be sure that you're staying pretty close to the horse so you don't get kicked while you're messing around with that hock. Absolutely, right. and that, that goes with any wraps of any legs. I mean, there are some young babies we've had to wrap their front legs, and they've never even been touched, not even by a farrier. And uh, that, that becomes difficult, and you may get a little hoof in the face, so you need to be very, very careful. Again, then one key that you need to keep in mind is horses stand on their diagonals, so they'll stand on their right front and their left hind comfortably, or their left front and their right hind. So if you're wrapping a hind limb, pick up the foot on the same side as that limb, and they should stand on it. There are some tricky ones out there who will balance on their whole right side and try to kick you with their left side or their whole left side and try to kick you with the right side. But if you pull up the front leg of that high, same hind limb that you want down, 
So I usually stand on the leg a lot better. Same thing on the front leg. You just pull up the opposite front leg, and they'll usually stand on it. Now, there have been a few that rear up, use your back, you know, things like that. But you need to incorporate somebody else's help on those tricky horses. That's a good, great tip. And, um, you, Aaron, you wanted to mention as well a couple of tips on wrapping a hoof if you need to do that. Yeah, the hoof is its always uh, forgotten, I hate to say, when it comes to wrapping um, because we're, the leg always has the wounds and stuff. But we'll, we'll see almost as many hoof injury incidences as we do leg injuries, maybe a little less. But in general, the hoof is very um, confusing for people to wrap. And I'll find that when they evolve off part of the wall, like they got hooked in the fence, they pulled back and it hooked the wall and peeled the wall back of the foot, you still want to try to maintain that wall in a good position until you get a veterinarian out there or a farrier or both to, to address the situation that just occurred. I tend to pick the foot up and I cradle the bottom of the foot with a, a large piece of uh, gauze, uh, not gauze, I'm sorry, cotton roll and that's that roll cotton that you, you can find at the feed store or the veterinarians have. Or you can even use one of your quilts if you're out on a trail ride and all you have is quilts for your leg wraps. You can put your quilt on the bottom of the foot. You know, of course, clean it off so you don't get it too dirty. And you put the quilt on the bottom of the hoof and wrap the edges up around the sides of the hoof wall. Start your vet wrap around the edge of the hoof wall itself, going up and then down underneath to incorporate like a boot that looks almost like the hoof. And you can really get a nice, snug vet wrap, wrap on any kind of cotton roll or quilt. It, the no-bows, you can't. Those things are like putting a pillow on the bottom and trying to wrap it up to the foot. But the um, smaller cotton quilts, you could get them to conform to the hoof wall a lot better. And then you put your vet wrap around it. On top of that, it's highly recommended you put duct tape because the horse will tear through the cotton roll or your quilt and through the vet wrap, and then your bandage is not doing its job of protecting the wounds in that area. The other asset to that is if you have a horse that's not very good about soaking its foot for abscesses, you can make a great little boot out of duct tape and vet wrap and cotton quilt, which is darn cheap, to soak the foot all day, and you're not struggling with them knocking over a bucket or jumping backwards or whatever the reason is that they won't soak their foot. They can soak their foot all day long in Epsom salts and water, by pouring it into the back side of the heel bulb area and the whole cotton roll soaks up the Epsom salts and water and soaks the bottom of the foot for an abscess while the duct tape holds the water in. Dr. Jones, do you or does the horse.com have a video of any of these things of wrapping the hoof? I know that there's a lot of videos on wrapping the leg, but these are some interesting ways. I've, I've never seen anybody soak a hoof like that, so I would love to see kind of how you made that. We actually are in the process of putting up videos, and I know the horse did a good job of putting up theirs, but we're putting it up just on our website of how to wrap legs and how to wrap a hoof. We just haven't um, launched onto the website. It's just my inabilities of a technical person and finding a technical person to do it for me. Um, but that is going to be put up on our website, and I'll, I'll send it on, put on your Facebook that it's up and the link to it type thing. But we want to YouTube it too, you know, make it a YouTube so that people can go to it. But that hoof wrap, is much easier shown on a video than described. I don't know how many times I've had to try to describe it when the client wasn't home, we saw an abscess, you know, we put it on, but trying to describe how easy it was to put on, you know, um, it was very difficult to write out. Once I talked to them on the phone, they got it. And two or three days later, they were thankful because they could never get that foot into a bucket or, you know, wrap a, a bag around it because the bag made too much noise or it felt funny to the horse. The wraps are still funny to the horse, but it seems to be a bit more um, accepting than right. a bag or right. a bucket. Very gotcha. good. And, and we don't have a video of that yet, but it is on our list, and it is, it's a great technique. And I, have, I do have this vision of, of Erin sitting on the other end of the phone trying to explain how to do this to a client, you know, pantomime and wrapping <laughs> the foot with her hands in front of her face. <laughs> well, what Absolutely. I warn you, and this is the secret that I learned from veterinarians when I was young, and I took it with me in life, is as the best thing to do is you lay out your duct tape and you pull off about 12-inch strips and you overlap them by, I don't know, a, a couple millimeters so they connect to each other, laying sticky side up on a table or however you want to do it. And you put four of them in a row. And then you do another set with four in a row. Then you put them on your pants leg. 
I have to say pants leg because I had a client do this in shorts and put it on her actual leg. You <laughs> stick, the, stick the side onto the pants leg of your, of your pants, one on uh, one leg, one on the other, and you've got four strips together, four strips together. You pick up the horse's foot, you take off the old bandage, you clean it out, you put your cotton on, you wrap it with vet wrap, and then you take four of those stickies and you go from front to back. Four of those stickies going from inside to outside, so you make like a red cross on the bottom. You wrap the edges up, and then you continue to, to secure it in place with one or two more wraps of the duct tape. Do you know how fast you can get that done once you get, once you get practice on it? It's very quickly on a baby that's never had their feet up, on a kicking back leg of a horse, if you have somebody else you know, helping you out. It, it's amazing how fast you can get that on once you get um, a process. And you don't even have to put the vet wrap on if you get very quick. You can just put the cotton on and put the duct tape right on. Perfect. I think that's a great. Tip. I had to, I had to mention the pants though because the client said, "Yeah, uh, warning." Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah you know, you didn't, she didn't have to wax your legs. <laughs> <laughs> no shaving for a week. Yeah, no, you got to work with what you got. If you're wearing shorts, then by God, you know, take one for the team. You get on there. <laughs> <laughs> didn't think of it that way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then at that moment, your horse handler is trying to figure out who needs help more if you're the horse. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> yelling from peeling that duct tape off your leg. <laughs> well, well, it's about, uh, let's see, we're starting to run a little bit short on time. Uh, Glenn, Jamie, would you rather us, uh, finish this show up when we talk about uh, leg protection when riding and in the trailers uh, as a part two? Or you want to yeah. Well, there you go. Stay tuned to Horse Tip Daily next week, and we will be posting part two of bandaging how-tos and how not -tos. Twos. To listen to more of the Horse.com's tips, just go to Horsetipdaily.com and go to the Experts drop-down menu on the left. If you love listening to Glenn the Geek and Jamie putting in their two cents on horse health topics, tune into Horses in the Morning on Wednesdays at 10 for a weekly fix of the up-to-the-minute horse health information. You can also go to the Horse.com and find the mother load of horse health information covering pretty much every topic imaginable. Please stop by the Horse Tip Daily Facebook page and let us know what you think of the tips you hear on the show. It's also a great place to tell us about topics you'd like to hear us cover. You can subscribe to all of the great shows on the Horse Radio Network through iTunes or Zoom and get your horse podcasts automatically downloaded to your iPod, Zoom, or MP3 player. I'll be back again tomorrow with another new expert and a different horse tip. Until then, go ride your horse! The Horse Radio Network and the Horse Radio Network hosts are not responsible for statements of guests or their opinions. Use your own judgment when listening to the tips provided by the experts on Horse Tip Daily.